Hybrid Landscapes, a study in actual and perceived dimension. This short film is a study of how a design space can influence how people interact with their environment and each other. We will be taking a look at several designs that present different experiences depending on one's perspective within a space. Before we get into any specifics, let's break down how the physical aspects of space can affect us emotionally and guide us through an experience. A classic example of the difference between actual and perceived space can be seen in the Ha Ha Wall, which can be found throughout English rural landscapes. Traditional livestock barriers usually block the views of vast rural landscapes, but by creating a sunken landform on the edge of a pasture, which is then brought back up to grade by a retaining wall, this issue is solved. This allows for unrestricted views of the pasture for the farmer, while easily containing livestock and preserving the physical barrier. Where a typical wall may block one's view, the Ha Ha Wall succeeds in creating expansive views with no visual barriers. By partially defining the walkway, there is an indication of how the space should be used. By forming a partial landscape barrier, it encourages us to observe the surrounding space. Let's take a look at this design concept that lacks any physical barriers. While this space is somewhat uninteresting because of its lack of features, it provides an open experience and feeling of peace similar to that of an open meadow. By creating a fully defined landscape, the designer is restricting us visually and physically within the space. There is potential for a sense of anxiety within the user due to the lack of ability to observe the space around us. Bryant Park in New York City is a design that uses edge conditions to successfully provide two distinct experiences for its users. The main feature of this park is the central lawn, which is an open and neutral space, providing users with total prospect of the surrounding area. The soft features and even ground elevation create a casual and relaxing experience, allowing groups to actively engage with one another as well as the environment from a common perspective. Moving to the outer edge of the lawn, we start to see a shift in experience towards a more intimate and personal setting. Where people gathered in groups within the lawn, they now tend to sit alone or in a pair on the border of the lawn. The trees that border the outside of the whole space act as a visual barrier, guiding users to focus their attention towards the center of the park. This contrasts greatly with the experience of those on the central lawn, whose gaze is directed towards the outer edge of the space. Even though there is no real visual or physical barrier between the concrete and the lawn, the curb establishes the lawn as something that is separate from the pathway. The position of an individual in relation to the edge dictates their visual experience, which in turn creates their emotional understanding of the space. Across the pond in London, the Sheldon Square Amphitheater shows a method of visual direction that has its roots in our democratic tradition. The ancient Greeks created the amphitheater for use in theater and politics. The amphitheater served as an essential structure for their daily lives. By directing the views of its users to a single sunken point, they are all participating in one common visual experience. In contrast to spaces such as Bryant Park, where the most common action is observing different people go about their everyday activities, in an amphitheater setting there is only one focal point, usually an event or dialogue. In the case of Sheldon Square, this common landscape form guides the user's attention towards the center stage, keeping in the tradition of using amphitheaters for entertainment. The wall that's created by the sunken landform, as well as the partial barrier created by the trees in the back, separate the audience from the surrounding street life. The Flight 93 Memorial in Pennsylvania is a good example of a design that uses contrasting spatial experiences to convey the gravity of a historic event. When you first enter the monument, you are funneled into a narrow space between two immense concrete walls. Much in the way that skyscrapers make people who are unaccustomed to big city life feel, 
one feels very anxious and trapped within these narrow spaces. This experience is created to shadow the emotions felt by those who were on Flight 93 in the moments leading to impact. After experiencing this part of the memorial, your view is greatly expanded onto this vast meadow. The rolling hills and fragrant vegetation convey a sense of calmness for one traversing along this path through the meadow. The feeling you have on this path so greatly contrasts the immensity of the events that took place on 9-11. The calm sense of emotion that one experiences along this path provides them with an opportunity to reflect on what took place during this day in American history. The intensity of the emotional experience of the memorial relies on the sense of contraction and expansion both visually and physically. Designed by Thomas Balsley Associates, the Aiken Place Park in Toronto is the last design covered in our study. The variety of seating options located throughout this design provide users with the option to choose their experience within the site. Let's consider these two people sitting towards the front left corner of the rendering. The seating arrangement and table suggests that they turn inward for a more intimate conversation, despite the fact that they are exposed to the street. This experience is contrasting to that of the people relaxing on the open lawn, towards the back of the rendering. They have located themselves in an area that allows for more of an open experience, however, the slope of the lawn directs their attention towards the street rather than the building behind them. The experience created on the lawn at Aiken Place Park is notably different from that located within Bryant Park. The slope at Aiken Place Park does two things. It directs attention away from the lawn, even though it is the central feature of the space, and it causes the open space to become less neutral. Each of the places that have been discussed in this study use different dimensions of design to guide the focus of users towards important elements to provide a variety of emotions. Bryant Park in New York City uses a contrasting edge condition to encourage observation providing those bordering the lawn to clearly overlook the actions taking place on the lawn. The Sheldon Square Amphitheater in London takes advantage of an old age formula, for guiding the attention of large crowds towards one focal point. The Flight 93 Memorial in Pennsylvania uses the contraction and expansion of physical environments to recreate an emotional experience of historic significance. Finally, Aitken Place Park in Toronto uses view sheds as well as configuration of landform to encourage interaction with street life in the city. All of the locations covered in this study represent examples of design where the designer shaped landscape elements in specific ways that call the attention of the user towards specific aspects of life and culture throughout the world.